Hi there. Welcome to History Chats. I think everything looks like it's working. Um, kind of something different here. Oh, I should turn off my... Making sure that works. I don't know. I thought i uh, um, put that together this uh, holidays here and thought, yeah, maybe we'll use something like that rather than have me jump on every, uh, every week and just kind of, I don't know, um, fill time until we get started. So, um, some different. Um, yeah. Anyway, we can jump right into it, though. Um, we are, yeah, this, this, this week, um, we're starting another, another year and another, another um, month of History Chats. And um, the, the theme for the month is going to be bridges. Um, there's a lot of really interesting bridges across Marathon County in our history. And um, why not spotlight some of them um, and tell the interesting stories behind them? Um, and so that's going to be the concept for this week. Um, and yeah, starting off with, with an interesting one, um, the, the so-called Snake Bridge, which is never really the original name, the, a formal name for the bridge. But I think if you've lived in Wassa or in the surrounding area for any length of time, you know, um, certainly before like 2004, 2005, uh, you probably are familiar with what Snake Bridge is. Um, but for those of you who maybe if you're, you're not, um, or, you know, just for the sake of for clarity here. So here's Google Earth. We can kind of zoom in. Um, so this is the city of Wausau. As it sprawls to the wet, you know, the southwest side here, you have the Wisconsin River um, and the Big Rib River, or just sometimes it's just the Rib River. Um, and crossing that here is this. This is um, the bridge. Now today you might know it as different names, um, but, and, and obviously this is, not the same bridge that we've had here for many, many, many years. It has, as we'll see, had a couple different iterations. Um, but the, the predecessor of this bridge, um, and maybe even this bridge, uh, you might consider this to be Snake Bridge. Um, interesting background to that. So that's what we're dealing with here. So it's basically crossing over from the Wassa area into the town of Rib Mountain here. Um, and uh, if you don't want to take the highway, you know, the major freeway bypass uh, or, or to go all the way around the southeast side and cross over and come up. This is the major thoroughfare um, to do that. We'll come back to that in a bit. This is obviously an older bridge, um, one that's, um, so the, there's a town history. Um, the town of Red Mountain in 1976 put together a history of the town of Red Mountain uh, or, or the town of Fleeth, as it sometimes is, fun fact. Um, for many of the early years, you see it as Fleeth. Uh, but they, they have a little bit here where they say that the um, when the first settlers came, Rib Mountain was isolated from Wassa by the Wisconsin and Rib Rivers. Some of the older residents remember the first bridge across the Rib River that connected Rib Mountain and Wassa. Over 100 feet long, built of steel with a bow-like trestle, over it painted red. Um, it was named McClary Bridge, after a man of that name who lived in a little pink house near the east end of the bridge. Now, some of that is, is certainly absolutely accurate, although I do have to quibble, unfortunately, with this phrase here, the first bridge. Firsts are, can be difficult to nail down. And granted, you know, 1976, they might not have had access to the resources that I do, um, but I can tell you that it almost certainly is not the first bridge. But we'll set that aside. We'll, 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 we'll get there. Um, the, this, this is essentially the bridge that they are describing, I believe. Um, it's possible that a predecessor of this also had sort of a red trestle, but um, anyway. What is worth noting is that there really isn't a bridge. There's not really a crossing here until the 1890s, maybe. We don't know specifically when the first, first bridge, but um, using uh, county plat maps, which is what this is, we can kind of get a sense of this. So this is going to be something I'm, I'm using a lot here. This is going to be as much a, a map story as it is a bridge story. Uh, for better or worse, we don't have a whole lot of early pictures or, or even later pictures of the bridge, but um, Wisconsin River kind of goes around this way. This is from 1882. Uh, this is the first of its kind that we have. Um, and then you see the Rib River. Again, um, later they kind of formally, we call it the, the Rib River, sorry, the Big Rib River, um, as the Little Rib River kind of becomes more important. But for many of the years, it's just called the Rib. Um, anyway. So the Rib River feeds into the Wisconsin River here, um, a little bit of a flowage. 
Um, notably, though, you know, the, the roads in yellow, they don't go very far. And part of the reason for this is, I mean, it's not like there wasn't anybody down here, right? Um, there were other ways to get here. You could, could go down kind of like, like I showed. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about this more next week. Uh, Gary is going to be talking about um, the, the crossing down here. So you, you could, but still, you know, that only gets you to the west side, Basically, if you wanted to cross, and I know this is a modern map here, I should have made a, an older one. Crossing the Wisconsin River, you could at any point just ferry across, or if it was frozen, of course, during the winter, you could just get over. Um, but until the 1880s, I mean, there was really two ways that you could get across. You could cross at Wassa up here, or you could cross down in Mosinee if you wanted to get to the west side of Marathon County. Um, you know, you could cross over then if you wanted to get down here, you could go over from Mosinee and go up, or you could cross at Wausau, go all the way to the next bridge, which is over at Marathon City, and then come back over. So obviously it's not ideal, but it is worth noting there's not as many people here. It really wasn't worth the investment, and certainly until the, the 1880s when you get access to the railroad, for example, um, bringing in resources uh, and, and, and you know, leading to the, the greater expansion of the, the rural community, there really wasn't as much happening on the west side of the Wisconsin River here. So, uh, but, but by the end of the century, you do see that. You do see the people that are coming um, and the need for a bridge. What this does show, though, is the location here of land owned by one J. McLeary. Um, interestingly, sometimes, I mean, so, so let's talk about um, John, I think his name is. Um, this is an obituary that I think is the gentleman in question, although you'll note that sometimes the name McLeary has a Mick Cleary, and sometimes it's just Mick Clear Leary. Um, it's a little ambiguous, and sometimes over the years you've seen McCleary Bridge and McCleary Bridge, which are different in spelling, but ultimately sound the same, which is probably part of the problem. Um, yeah. Ultimately, though, he does own a house here, he and his family, um, and apparently it was pink. And um, by the 1890s, you can see that they crossed over. So this is, again, a plat map showing the rural area going outside here, go to the Wisconsin River, sort of the, this Wassa area kind of creeping down, and then Rib Mountain or Fleeth. Um, I don't even know if it was Fleeth at this point, but... Um, and then in red, you can see the crossing over. So we do have a bridge. Now, this might be the original bridge, but the problem is, is that it, it's not the same here. So, so if we jump from 1895 to 1901, interestingly, the angle changes. Now, there's an element here that perhaps this might have been because the plat map maker was not being as direct, but the whole point of a plat map is a map that you can use to navigate this area. And so in all likelihood, they were um, accurate in this regard. So um, it seems unlikely that they, they, they would change this. Um, although it is interesting to look and compare them over the years. I, I think between 1895 and 1901, I'm guessing they went from sort of an early ramshackle bridge to a uh, maybe more permanent bridge. It is hard to say, but you can see the angle does change a little bit. I wish I had pictures or, or something or description to show everybody, but um, we'll have to do with this. Um, but that seems to be the case, right? So by the turn of the century, we have more of a stable bridge. Um, the other thing that's interesting is they don't, sometimes they, the, 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 the plat map makers will go into depth. I don't think that the river was, like, the, the river is different here. It seems to be con changing considerably to some extent or another. Um, and that's going to change even more so into the 19 teens. So this is 1913, and we can see yet another bridge. And I think this is separate from the other two um, because you can see it really jags. Actually, let's go back and talk about, <coughs> you know, basically throughout this period, whether it's one bridge or three different bridges, um, the accounts that we do have, again, from the Rib Mountainer, um, written in 1976, um, they might have been a little vague about the, the specifics of what bridge was which. Um, it doesn't change that much, by the way, so this is why I think it's fairly similar. Um, 1913, um, exactly what the angle of the bridges change. I don't think that these are different bridges, but exactly how you notate that changes. Um, the big thing that does, actually, if you go back here, um, I, want, I want to get back to the, this account here. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm jumping around. Um, 
Before we get there, though, it's worth noting, why does this change? It's not just that this is a little less precise, right? These, the 1890 turn of the century, the river actually does expand quite a bit comparatively. And in a large part, this has to do with the creation of the paper company down in Rothschild. Um, the Marathon Paper Corporation or Marathon Paper Mills, as you can see, there's a lot of the land here around the river, the flowage, is now owned by the Marathon Mill Paper or Marathon Paper Company, Marathon Corporation. And I think that's because they understood that the water was going to, by damming the river down in Rothschild to harness the river power, it turns Lake Wassa into a Lake Wassa, um, to the extent where it might not even been considered a real lake. It's just kind of a wide part of the river, but now it's a lake. And as that water gets backed up because the dam is holding the flowing of the river, um, you know, downtown or, you know, sort of more in the Wassa area, um, we have the falls. So it, the, the terrain is higher. Um, Eau Claire River, I think, probably similarly higher, but here the the waters or the the the, the level of the land is is kind of it's kind of lower level, right? So if the water is going to back up, it's going to continue to back up here, and that's why this kind of gets wider. I'm guessing that's why the Marathon Paper Mill Corporation buys up the land because they don't know exactly where it's going to land, and you can't just you know build a you know a dam a river and get the lake. They had to kind of buy up the land to make sure. Um, that nobody else was going to lose out on that. Because it's one thing for them to lose out some land that gets covered by the water. Um, but uh, yeah, if, you're, if this is your family home, uh, you know, your family farm, that's a different thing. So you can see that the, the, you know, this stays pretty consistent throughout the 1920s. Or, and then in the 30s, we'll see some changes too. But let's just talk about this era bridge. Again, according to the, um, the, the history that was written, there's some interesting stuff here. Um, so they talked about how it ran um, almost straight east-west um, from the, the, the McCleary household, that pink house, little pink house near the east end of the bridge. It ran almost straight east-west. Um, so this is, this is probably the early version, um, and they're conflating some things, but that's right. Um, running almost straight east-west, it was high above the water to allow for um, the high water from melting snow each spring. So it was, it was up, right? It's not just going at water level. They had to get it higher so that, you know, maybe there's some logging happening. Maybe there's some traffic on the river. We want to make sure that people can get underneath it and that the, the ice melting isn't, you know, during the spring isn't going to wash it away. Interestingly, the height, this height, made it nece necessary to have steep inclines on either end of the bridge. Makes sense, right? You got to get it up high. In the winter, farmers with a team and a load of wood sometimes found it impossible to get up the incline. So they drove over the ice of the river instead. Spring and summer had their problems too. Mrs. Anton Koleski uh, said that the spring floods caused long muddy stretches along the road next to the bridge. Quote, so folks had to take the boat across the river, unquote. And the problem in the summer was that the bridge was so narrow that Henry Heil couldn't get a load of hay across. Ed Schlick had to, uh, got a load of hay across, but his brother Clarence, who was sitting on top of the load, got stranded on the trestle of the bridge. So I think, I think what you can kind of see here, and you can kind of see this here, you can see why the, the, this reputation for being a snaky bridge, and, and they were calling it back in these days a snake bridge. Maybe not snake bridge, but they called it a snaky bridge, right? Um, this was wide enough to get a wagon load across. This is not two lanes of traffic. So, uh, and you can see how the approach, you know, looking at 1920 here, they come down the river, and then it's kind of a turn, and then you go up an incline, over, um, and maybe this is slightly different, but even going back to like these, you can see that the, it's it kind of, it's, it's not in line with the existing road. They, they crossed where they could, and that often meant that, you know, it wasn't necessarily the most straight shot, especially when you add an incline and then getting up and then down, and it's only so wide. It, it did kind of snake its way around. And even, you know, as it, it kind of um, got onto the river here, um, you can see all of that. But I think what happens here is this period from 19 teens with the expansion of the river, um, it's likely that they ended up um, potentially replacing the bridge. And, and this is hard to track. They don't, because they don't necessarily have road names in, at this period in time, turn of the century. Um, they start to like call this highway trunk, uh, trunk highway N or county highway N. Yeah. County trunk road N uh, eventually by like the 1930s. But um McCleary sometimes gets used, sometimes it doesn't. 
anyway, the point is, um, what was the point there? Lost my train of thought. Um, it, it is snaky. Um, I guess that's what I'm getting at. Um, oh, so this bridge, right. If there is a bridge that is this bridge, which by the way, this is a James Colby postcard that's been colorized or maybe not postcard. I think it's just a photograph he took. Um, there is that red trussle. I'm guessing of early versions of this had some sort of trussle too, to give it some strength. That's basically the, the arch that supports the bridge to keep it from falling down as things cross it. Um, and you can see that, you know, by this point, and I think this is probably, uh, both because James Colby, we know, took this picture. Um, this is probably this era of bridge, um, because it, it pretty, um, you know, you can see that we are kind of coming off 11th Avenue here, what is 11th Avenue. Um, that's kind of set, uh, but the, the angle of the bridge is just a little different, but Rib Mountain in the distance, and this is a very familiar um, bridge. But the bridge that we come to know as Snake Bridge, it, again, if you're, if you, you young enough or perhaps uh, came to this area after 2004, you maybe didn't have the, the pleasure or displeasure of driving on this road, uh, but this is from 1945. This is the first plat map that has this new bridge Again, coming off 11th Avenue, um, what is still at this point Red Mountain, although the city of Wausau will annex this um, in the next few decades, um, and just kind of creeping along here to, to connect with what is now uh, Trunk Highway N. Sorry, County Trunk Road N. I don't think they called it a highway quite yet. Um, that's this bridge. And um, let's see here. It is really interesting. So this was built in 1931, um, opened in November. Um, this is interesting. This is a newspaper article here um, showing the new bridges in a short radius of Wassa. So uh, Marathon City, here's the, the McClary Bridge. Uh, um, let's see, what else here? The Eau Claire River and, uh, oh, Merrill. This is Merrill here, and then um, at Schofield. That's interesting because in 1930, 31, um, you see all of these new bridges, right? Um, yeah, I'm just gonna get rid of this. Um, property values enhanced, grade separations will increase the total sum. All very attractive. Um, they're talking about how, they're, call, they're calling them super bridges. These, are, these aren't just bridges, these are bridges with concrete and steel. Um, you know, they note there's only one one-way bridge in the region. Um, a lot of bridges are changing. Now people are driving around. The Snaky Bridge across Rib River. Um, I don't know if you can... Snaky Bridge across Rib River in the town of Fleeth, comes from mountain, is now replaced by a modern bridge, the approaches to which have been widened and straightened. Um, very interesting. And perhaps it's, it's that name, that, that Snaky Bridge, it still kind of feels snaky, especially as more people are taking this traffic. Um, and actually, um, interestingly, so Google Earth, um, this is going to be a later version of it. Um, there's actually, they have, they have old satellite or, or air, aerial views. So we can go back to uh, 1998. It's not gonna be quite the same. Um, but this is that bridge, right? So if you're familiar, um, it's a it's a small, it's two lanes. Um, they did, over the years, make some changes to it. And actually, you can see here, uh, for example, in 1976, uh, it was widened and resurfaced, um, although they could only go so wide, right? At a certain point, um, you know, you had to, the bridge is as wide as it's going to be. But this is, this is um, certainly, you know, a familiar thing, even 1976. Um, so here's some pictures of 1990s, again, just kind of illustrating the, um, you know, the, the, there's a walkway along, you know, the side here, but um, there's that snake bridge. And I remember, you know, I'm, I'm certain, certainly uh, anybody who's driven on this remembers it. It was a, um, I remember taking my driving uh, instructor and learning to drive and being taken on this and it being sort of like, ooh, this was, this was like, you don't take the new kids on driver's ed uh, through this area. You, you, you wait until they've had a little time uh, because it's it can be kind of stressful if there's other cars. It's it's very close lanes. You're in the middle of a, of a, of a, of a, a bridge, um, you know, kind of be tricky. But there's also sort of a, an interesting sort of um, you know appeal to it. I guess it has it has an interesting character that uh, 
you know, maybe you don't necessarily want an abridged. Maybe you want a bridge to just be nice and you can drive it and not have to worry about it. But it added an interesting character to, to going to Rib Mountain from Wassa and vice versa. Anyway, um, you can see it that though that eventually we do change. And if we again use use their fun built-in um, things here, so that was ninety eight. If we go to two thousand and four, the bridge is still there, but we have a new bridge getting started. So um, I mean, it's not a surprise. We we know what it ends up being. It ends up being this. Uh, but in, in 2003, um, we start to see the, the, the building and then 2004 opening up the new bridge. Now, this is a, a process that was taking a while. Um, this is back in 1994. There was a big uh, survey launched uh, between Wassa and um, the state of Wisconsin and the town of Rib Mountain to figure out, okay, how do we, how do we, you know, this bridge is getting older. It's starting to decay in places. We need to start making plans for some changes. Um, and it's during this period that basically two major um, things end up happening. Um, two plans. Actually, there's there's three plans that end up coming out. Uh, but one of them, um, and I don't think I grabbed the right, uh, I don't know if it's in here. Well, anyway, so there's, there's kind of two plans. One is to rebuild the bridge as it was, where it connects from 11th Avenue. Um, so we go back to... Right? So from 11th Avenue uh, down here. This isn't ideal for a bunch of reasons, in part because it, it funnels traffic through this residential area. You have Colby and Colby, which is, you know, is a growing company, you know, having the office on one side and the factory on the other. And, you know, it wasn't the best location for a major thoroughfare. And also keep in mind that, you know, this isn't just a bunch of farms anymore. And by the 1980s, 1990s, we start to see, you know, um, stores go in. We have the, the shopping com commerce that's being put in. We got neighborhoods. This isn't just, hey, we need to be able to get out there. This is a destination for people. So we're going to need to see increasing traffic on this. So we need to make some changes. So that was one suggestion. And then the other one was to move it to 17th Avenue. Uh, the third option would have been um, just to kind of hold on for a while and, and sort of take the existing bridge and sort of Re revive it. Um, and that doesn't end up con exactly happening as planned. Um, in all, it, it just became too much. And so they, they, they kicked it down the, the, you know, kicked that can down the street, so to speak, um, until the 1998, I think, is when they kind of revisited 1999. And then in the new millennium into the new 2000s, um, you know, okay, we got we to make some, some, some choices. And so ultimately, um, you know, that's what they end up doing. They end up going with the 17th Avenue one. And you know, here we are, um, McClary Bridge, um, once again. Officially, the, uh, so this is from the opening. Um, apparently, Dave Carlson was the first guy to go across. I don't know if that's the first one, um, but him, his, his new, no, it can't be his first one. Um, anyway, uh, but his, 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 you know, Corvette going, going across um, to open up the new bridge. Um, did I... I didn't. Oh well. Um, well. One of the interesting things, and I think I think the bottom part of this article even talks about how. Well, do we do we call this Snake Bridge now? What what is what is um. What what do we what do we call it right? Because it's not it's definitely not snaky. Um, you know, going from the the pre nineteen thirty to the post nineteen thirties, that that old Snake Bridge did feel snaky, but now it's really it's pretty straight, right? Um, the modern bridge is it's relatively it's a little bit of a bend, but it'd be weird to call this a Snake Bridge. But also, do we call it McCleary? Because McCleary's been gone for a while. His house would probably be underwater at this point. Or do we need to call it a specific name? Do we just call it Seventeenth Avenue Bridge? or Rib Mountain Drive Bridge, depending on, you know, which direction you're used to going. Um, I think that there's sort of a mix there. I think there are probably still people that call this Snake Bridge, um, if only through the momentum of, of using it over the years. Uh, but also, you know, McClary Bridge, I think officially it is McClary Bridge still. Um, but yeah, kind of interesting. So there you go. There's the first of a, a few bridges that we'll be talking about this week. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, so anyway, 
Um, we're going to be continuing. Um, I'm just trying to remember where I, I put this here, history chats. Um, next week, we're going to, uh, Gary Gisselman will be in, and he'll be talking about this bridge, um, which may not be obvious. Uh, not this bridge specifically, but this is one of them. Um, the bridges that crossed, you know, whether you know it as uh, Tannery Bridge or um, Strollers Lane or today what is, is Thomas Street, um, that, that Wassa crossing the southern bridge to cross the Wisconsin River. So that'll be an interesting program. A lot of history, a lot of changes here as well. Actually, it's going to be kind of a running theme. I think there's a lot of different bridges um, over the years. Infrastructure tends to have different generational uh, needs to, to keep it updated and, and replace as you know new needs arise. Um, yeah, come back for that. Again, uh, we're, this month, every Thursday at 1230, we'll be doing a new bridge. And, and um, yeah. Also, just to let you know, if you're not familiar, um, uh, our History Speaks series, our longer uh, weekly in-person lectures uh, are starting up again. Um, the, the folks from the Wisconsin Valley Improvement Company are finally going to be back. We've been trying to make it work through, through the COVID uh, situation the last few years, and it looks like it's finally going to line up, fingers crossed. Um, and they're going to be doing a program about the, the history of the company and, and running the river and kind of managing the Wisconsin River. Uh, again, a very uh, relevant uh, topic considering what we are doing um, uh, this week for our history chats. So that'll be at uh, 2 p.m. on Saturday, uh, January 21st. So that's coming up not this weekend, uh, but next weekend? I should double check that. No, two weekends. Okay, 21st. You know, keep keep an eye out. We'll tell you more about it as time goes in, remind you. Uh, but yeah, another great program in person here at the Woodson History Center. Um, and uh, yeah, although we, we do try to record them, uh, it just may not be live streamed um, going forward. We'll put that recording up if you can't make it, but it's always fun to see people in person. Anyway, so there, there you go. There's, um, there is, I should, hold on, I should put a better, it's definitely worth the time and investment here. There we go. Um, I'm going to check to see if there's any questions or comments. I usually try to monitor that, but, um, kind of got lost in, in getting the program together. As you might be able to tell, I have a little bit of a, a, a uh, scratchy voice here. I, I, I unfortunately got the one of the sicknesses that's been going around this week, so um, I didn't have as much prep time as I normally do. But um, hopefully, yeah, it still came out pretty good. I think. Um, yeah, cool. Oh, bunch of questions. Well, thanks uh, through through Trust Bridge. Yeah, so uh, Scott, just kind of, I'm answering the, the sort of uh, question here of, of whether, um, do we call it Snake Bridge or not? Um, suggest that many people still call it because y you know, you know what you're talking about. Um, it's a good point. Um, sometimes the, the colloquial name for things kind of just hold on just because, uh, yeah, um, that's what we know it as and it's, it's easy to be, be clear about it. But I'd be curious if, if you know the name um, of, of this particular bridge as something else, what do you know it as? All right. Well, I think I think we'll call it there for the day. Um, again, more bridges coming up next uh, next week and and throughout the month. If you're interested in these sort of things, a lot more bridge history coming up, and uh, hope you join us for that. Um, in the meantime, have a wonderful afternoon or morning or whenever you're watching this, and uh, we'll see you next time. All right.